so much damage was caused by Hurricane Ian. My heart just breaks for this family. Look at all the things that they've lost. Hey, man. You must be Tyler. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you? Nice to meet you. So this guy was a new insurance adjuster, which happens all the time after a catastrophic storm. Ooh, we got a mess. You're going to have to replace this entire ceiling because it's continuous. This is minor damage. Give me a break, man. Watch your step. Don't break yeah. your neck in here. There's no way 10 grand's going to cover this. And for you to spit in the face of the family that lives here like that, it's ridiculous to me. They call it insurance wars for a reason. They're not always on your side, and you're not always in good hands. My name is Bo Williamson, and I am a public adjuster. I stand up for homeowners when they have insurance claims. Our headquarters is in Panama City Beach but our fight is nationwide. Sometimes insurance claims can be through the roof. However, insurance companies don't always wanna pay you. That's why I'm here. Living the Christian life and dealing with this crazy world around me, one thing I've learned is someone has got to stand up for the little guy. This is Insurance Wars. After you, sir. After you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's the, 101. The optics are good. I like the feel as you walk in. Oh, it's so nice. Very it's nice. It's professional. It's ordered. Our home office is in Panama City Beach, Florida, but we have offices in Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, and up and down in Florida. We've just opened our latest location, which is going to be in Port Charlotte. That allows easy access for the PAs who are working here and all of our community to be able to reach us. Uh-huh, so here we go. That one in and up. Nice, wide open. Oh, look at the nice windows. Very nice. That's good. Yeah, this will be big Take enough. Take that off there. Yeah. Coffee. <laughs> yes. This will be the break area. We can know. always have coffee. Put all the waiting room chairs out here. Yeah, it's like a lobby, right? I always hate it when you deal with the company and you can't go and talk to them. You can't meet them face to face. And so we always try to make sure that we have some physical place they can go and say, I want to talk to someone from Noble, and we have people there that uh, they can talk to. It's a really nice office, and I'm, I'm very happy to be part of it. And yeah. Susan and I have a corner office. I just want to put our names uh, here. We have a corner office. I like, there's so many offices. For, yes. You know? I think we could do with a corner office, Susan. Yeah. This is security to beat up all the insurance adjusters that want to come in here. We could put bars on the windows <laughs> and keep them here. <laughs> Hey, Bo, how are you? Tyler, what's going on, man? Yeah, I'm over here on uh, on River Road. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man. It's right over by the office. Well, yeah, come on by. I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to meet a client. She called me to come out. You know, getting ready to do a, a carrier inspection as well, so. Yeah, man, I was wanting to hook up with you anyway. You're killing it. You know, after spending a year and a half behind the desk in the nice cold air condition, which I highly recommend, by the way, I told myself I need to get out in the field. I need to meet with these people face to face to let these people know we're here for them, we're in their corner, we're here to take care of them, and I felt I can do that more effectively in person as opposed to over the phone. Be there in a minute, check it out. All right, good, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Tyler typically uh, is a desk PA, so he normally is working uh, at the headquarters, helping the clients over the phone and arguing, negotiating with the insurance company and sending emails and building the claim. But you know, he wanted to go out and sign people up after the storm. He's great to work with, big, uh, lovable teddy bear that guy is. See the alligator in the pond over there, man? <laughs> yeah, I sure did. I think there's like four of them in there. Oh, it's a small pond that has so many gators. I know. So what's going on here, man? So yeah, so you know, this house, they're one of those unfortunate few that got a little bit of both. They have the wind damage, of course, from the hurricane, you know, to the roof and to the siding and the windows. And then of course, unfortunately, because of that pond, they did get a little bit of flooding and they don't have flood insurance. Right. However, the damage from that storm created opening is extensive all the way down to the first floor. So why are you back out here today then? So she called me and said that she was noticing the mold was starting to get worse, starting to get uh, you know bigger spores growing on the walls and just wanted to see what we could do about that. So she that. hasn't done any mitigation? No, not yet. She wanted to keep it that way so the carrier can do their full inspection. We need probably to get Restoration Depot or somebody out here. Sure, absolutely. To do it. Hey, Hi, Christy. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> Good to see you again. You too. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for That's coming. That's Bo Williamson. Hi, Bo. Nice to meet you. Appreciate nice to meet you. you coming pleasure. out as well. Christy, right? Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Christy, and I own several properties in Southwest Florida. Many of them are rentals, and as my own home, so much damage was caused by Hurricane Ian. I found out about Noble through Insurance Wars. It was a program that I happened to catch on TV and watch several episodes, and from there, gave them a call. So yeah, I was just now getting caught up to speed. Like, what happened? I, I mean, I know the storm was horrible. What? Really yeah, well, they're by. saying now it was a near Category 5 mm. hurricane. And so we had wind and we had rain. And it, it's a mess. It's just, we're devastated. We're just, we have renters. And so is that who's living in the camper? Yes, and so they're having, and they have small children, so they're trying oh, wow. to, you know, a family in the small camper when they can't be in their home. Yeah. And I called right away, trying to get through to my insurance agency. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get through, couldn't get through, and I finally got somebody to come out. I think the guy did a drive-by. Mm. You know, he was here, he's, oh, yep, this looks like flooding. He didn't look at things. He wasn't here long enough to look at things. After they, they sent an adjuster out and came back with what they thought was a, an offer, which was ridiculous, and it wasn't even going to cover the expenses and the, and the damage that was received to, to repair or rebuild. So um, I had to go on and take the next step. It's every hurricane that we work, the, the homeowners blames it on flood insurance and the flood insurance blames it on homeowners and, you know, it's just, it's just so they don't have to pay. I mean, and we've been paying do. insurance for years mm -hmm. without a claim, so. You know, I'd like to see the inside if you show it to us. Well, come on in, I, that'd be great. Right. You know, the sooner we can get going, the better. Tyler has been great. It took so much pressure off of me, not only this property, but now I'm having him handle all of my properties that have had damage. So pour the, you guys pulled the carpet out, that's good. Yeah, as the storm was hitting, we had the waters pouring in. We're trying to pull stuff out and get it high. And this is the first floor too. It's come all the way down. It's pretty, uh, pretty significant. I had been here shortly after the hurricane and seen the damage, but coming back again now, it's been a few weeks and it's just gotten worse. There needs to be something done quickly. You know, the thing they'll try to fight on, and I think that's already what they've done, is that, that clear water line. But, but at the end of the day, we're not claiming the water line because, you know, this, this water came from up top came from up top, so. You notice all this water damage that came from the top down as well. And this water damage is category three water. Okay, so category three water, anything that it touches that's porous, you have to rip out. You know what we gotta do, Tyler, we gotta get some moisture mapping in here and mold testing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this obviously has mold. You can see this is water damage up here, even the upper cabinets, as well as the lower, so. What we're claiming on the homeowner's policy is, is the water coming from the top and it's cat three water. You know, I think this is the one, you know, that demonstrates the most the difference between flood and water. These are solid panels. Not only do you have the, the matching statute which says you're gonna replace all of this, you know, you can't just do one section. You're gonna have right. to do all of it, all They'll the way down. They'll never match, yeah. Yeah, regardless of the flood line, mm -hmm. there's still damage here mm -hmm. that has to be taken care of. And not only is there mold, on the wall, it's also on the ceiling. So it's definitely gotta be coming from the top as well. Ms. Christie, she had damage from both flood and from wind. And so when you have two separate causes of damage like that, even though they all originate from the hurricane, if there's a clear and obvious flood line, the homeowners, which is the wind policy, is going to completely blame it on flood. And sometimes, Flood, even though there's a flood line, will say the rest of the damages, that's all covered by wind. So they'll pass it around back and forth. Everybody's passing the blame, and you're stuck in the middle trying to figure out what's what and who's who. So trying to work out those two differences, it is kind of tough. However, it is something that we do, and, um, and I think we're going to be successful with it. My heart just breaks for this family. Look at all the things that they've lost. Yeah, this is the kids' room. Out of the shame. We'll take care of it. I think they're gonna have a brand new Good house after this. The water damage, category three water, the flood damage, I'm noticing the mold, 
uh, all of these things, I mean, it's gonna be a constructive total loss. It's a major, major deal. Typical category, you know, five hurricane damages, uh, which is very catastrophic. You know, it's a fight, as, you know, as you're starting to see with these insurance companies, they just, their directive is to blame it on the other guy. You think it'll get covered? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll win, for sure, 100%. It's just a matter of how long is it gonna take? That's the only question. And that really depends on if your insurance company acts like a good company and acts in good faith going forward, or if they act like a bad insurance company and, and act in bad faith. They call it insurance wars for a reason. They, they don't like to pay, I'm telling you. Every dollar they give you is a dollar they no longer have. So Tyler, what's next? You got a re-inspection lined up to get this guy to do his job? Yeah, yes sir, so re-inspection with, uh, with the insurance company. And I'll be out here for that personally okay. whenever the guy gets out here. Okay. And I will make sure that he spends more than just 10 minutes this time. Even if I have to hold his hand and walk him through the damages, that is something that I will do. And that's my number one priority. He will look at everything top to bottom. All right. And we're going to get them to do the right thing, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. These independent adjusters, they just blow through these things because when they first start out, they do a thorough job and they send it into the insurance company and the insurance company tells them, we're not paying that, take all this off your estimate. Once they do that about 10 times, the adjuster learns, oh, I just need to write up just a little bit and, and just blow through these and make my 300 bucks. I'm not gonna make $3,000 on any of these because the carrier's not gonna pay. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why they're just here 10 minutes. They just write up something small and go on. But it, it's, it's gonna work out. It's just, okay. we always win. The only question is how long is it gonna take us to Take them to task. Well, I so appreciate it, you guys. Glad you're working for me. Absolutely. <laughs> no problem, Miss Christie. It was good seeing you again, and, and I'll definitely be out here, like I said, whenever okay. that adjuster comes out, and All right. we'll get it taken care of, okay? We'll be in touch. All, All right. right. I'll see you back at the office, brother. All right, Bo, good seeing you. Month after month, I'm paying my premiums and never making a claim, never had to make a claim, and then we have something like this, and the adjuster comes out, they're saying they're not gonna cover it. That just doesn't seem right. Why am I paying for insurance if I'm not getting insured? So today, Bo and I were going out to the property to meet with Miss Christie and to meet with the insurance adjuster. They're going to be doing their reinspection. It's the first time they came out. They just kind of did a drive-by, glance and look. Didn't take any time at all. But today, we're going to be meeting them out there to make sure they do a clean and perfect inspection to make sure they get everything they need to do so there's no doubt that this is wind damage and not flood. So do you think you need me here for the inspection? No, we appreciate you opening the door. I mean, we can handle this guy. Uh, so you want to make phone calls yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I've got to call my other rentals and they're doing the same to all of them, so. Yeah, insurance companies, they never want to pay. Is that his music? Why has he got it so loud? <laughs> oh my God. Is that the adjuster? I think so. This adjuster pulls up just banging this music in this Jeep. I mean, just really loud obnoxious music. So that was the first impression, not not very uh, professional. Brad? Hey, I'm looking for Tyler. Hey, man. You must be Tyler. How are you, sir? I'm well. How Glad are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise. Well, looks like you got a little problem going on here, buddy. Yeah, I'd say so. It's, uh, what do you got? Some water damage? <laughs> yeah. He shakes Tyler's hands, and he immediately just, just naturally I uh, guess the hand sanitizer on. And if he's that worried about Tyler's hands, uh, I'm not sure how he's gonna do inside of the house. Weren't you here the last time? Yeah, but I was I was in a hurry. I had some things going on. I didn't spend a whole lot of time, but. Uh, oh, you're just gonna give us uh, a little bit of time. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I'm glad you came out. I'm glad you're able to make it. How, how long you been an adjuster? Uh, I'm kind of new at it, but you know, I've been in the construction industry and real estate for a while. And uh, oh, okay. feel comfortable doing construction and yeah. real estate. Yeah. Okay. So, Sold a few so, houses, so you see that. So you see that in. So this guy was a new insurance adjuster, which happens all the time after a catastrophic storm. The insurance companies just hire new people off the street. They just need warm bodies to show up. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. I met an adjuster, an adjuster one time that was a pig farmer two weeks before. Like he, he literally gave me his card 
And he was a pig farmer. That's what he did for a living. That's a problem when you're trying to explain very complicated coverage issues and, and category three water and matching statutes and all this to somebody who last week had a different job. Hey, you must be Bo. Yep, nice. the one and only. I'm Brad. You're I'm Christy. You're this is my adjuster. property. Nice to meet you. So I'm going to take care of things, guys. So OK. All, all right. right, make we'll, my calls. We'll take care. All right. Good deal. We got you, you covered, Miss Christy. We Thank got you. you. Well, let's check out uh, the interior of the home. Woo! Woo! What? It's got a little mold going on there. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, they didn't tell me that. Hang on, I got to prepare for that. We got. We got a couple little safety precautions. I, I got. I thought take. you said you can handle anything we throw at you. I can with my precautions. Give me just a second, buddy. Okay. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Is yeah. this guy? He's funny, man. I got myself into. Are you sure he's got a license? I'm not sure he's. <laughs> this place needs a ton of work. Look, well, he's got he's got brand new PPE gear. He's still in. It. He's turning out of plastic. This helmet's still in the plastic bag. Oh my god. You ever seen that uh that Beastie Boys video for Intergalactic? <laughs> That's what he looks like. Yeah. like. He's flying on a rocket ship. <laughs> All right, Mr. Tyler. Just about ready to yeah. check out your mess here, buddy. Perfect. Let's see what we got. Uh, I didn't thanks. know that uh, IAs did the rebuild also. Well, we got a mess. So, I mean. All right, so what do you, you can see, out, Mr. Tyler? Well, I, I think it's Ooh, pretty obvious. That is a mess. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I said that is a mess. Uh, you can't hear me with a mask on? Come on, man. Take it off. Take it I'll off. try to get through it, but this, is, this isn't this is good. All right, what do you got? All right, so. Clear as day, water damage to the ceiling. You can see right here, I mean, it's, it's coming down the wall, coming down the wall. It gets to these panels, pop this panel out. So, I mean, all of this is gonna have to be replaced to bring them back to pre-loss conditions. I mean, well, here's your water line. So, how do we get water damage up here if your flood's here? Well, uh, because of the, probably the giant hole in the roof and the busted out window that's upstairs. I mean, that is also there. There's also uh, all this water damage here. I mean, I think that's a drywall line just coming untaped, buddy. I'm sorry. I've seen that many times. Drywall, let's go. Okay. Well, I mean, there's another stain right here. And, you know, you can you can throw the excuses, drywall tape, you know, whatever it is. Okay. But there's the clear and obvious staining. And not only are these portions going to have to be replaced, you're going to have to replace this entire ceiling because it's continuous. You know, I don't care about this flood line here. You can't just fix up. It, it won't, it just won't work. Well, you, you've obviously got some water infiltration. Let me guess, this is just the AC line or something, huh? Uh, well, that's clearly, the pan leaked from the AC, went on down, wood wicks water. Jeez. Somebody broke your window, okay, so what, are you okay. saying the hurricane broke your window? Yeah, I'm saying the hurricane broke the window. It's, it's exactly right. It was okay, like well. 155 mile an hour winds, guy, I mean. Well, how come it didn't break this window and this window? Or that window and that window? Well, that's a good question. Let's ask the wind. Going through the house with him, it, it was really frustrating. I don't know what to think. I was just floored. This is all Cat 3 water. Everything it touches has got to come out. So IICRC, this is Is there a bathroom up code. here? Is there any, anything that could have leaked up above here? Honestly, yeah. it looks like an older home that needs some maintenance. Okay, so maybe maybe he did get some, some minor damage from the hurricane, but to me, most of it looks like water infiltration damage, which, unfortunately, your policy doesn't cover. This is minor damage. Give me a break, man. I don't see any water damage on the ceiling. There's a giant tarp literally right where we are. Right where we are, there's a tarp out there. Watch your step. Don't break your neck in here. There's like water damage right there. There is obviously clear damage that's way above his head on the ceiling, on the second floor, and just trying to convey that to him and convey that there is a difference between water coming down through a storm created opening and a flood line. It was like talking to one of the brick walls out there. You know, I would have had better luck with the gator in the pond trying to explain that to him. I mean, look, look at all this. You know, Brad, I'm not a betting man, but uh, if I were, I would bet you your net worth that the carrier ends up paying policy limits on this claim. I see more water infiltration than I do hurricane damage. I see an older home with poor craftsmanship, drywall lines all the way down, the tape's just letting go. 
That's where uh, water comes through. It finds the path of least resistance, which is going to be the cracks a, in the drywall, which is where the line. tape is, which is where the water is going to come through. This I, is I don't see a stain. Common sense. You don't see a stain, Brad. Brad. That it come looks, on. It looks to me like you don't somebody, see a stain. Somebody didn't want to paint up there because this is in the way. They were too lazy to reach up there and paint. It's like that. a salad right there. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, you got mold uh, now, but you need some kills. You need some mold block up there, buddy. Once okay. you get a warm, humid house, yeah, you're gonna have mold. I still think you're blaming the entire mess on the hurricane. Tyler, we're too far off, man. I, I he, think he's, we've got he's several it below problems. Deductible. I think we're at policy limits at this point. Uh, you know, he doesn't have any authority anyway. I so. know, I just, I just can't believe it. These, <laughs> there's kids and dogs that, and animals that live here. And they don't care, they don't care. Just don't care, it just blows my mind. Let's, let's let this guy get out of here because uh, I know he's freaking out from all the mold. Tyler, he, he takes these things personally, right? These are our clients, you develop relationships with them, and, and you kind of take offense to those things when, you know, a so-called adjuster doesn't even act like they care to, uh, to do a fair adjustment of the law. So Tyler was on the offensive early on. He was already upset with this gentleman and uh, it, it didn't get any better. Well, Tyler, from what I see, again, I think with your your three percent deductible, you're looking at about ten grand to cover your damages. You got a lot of flood. Uh, ten grand to cover all that. In there. That's that's about all I can do for you right now. It's about where your policy holds. I mean, it is it's it, it is what it is. So You've just enough where they pay zero. Yeah, just enough where you pay zero when you well, factor in that deductible, huh? No, ten grand will fix some of the problems you so, got upstairs. Some, but, yeah, but but that's not bringing them back to pre-loss conditions. You're well, not indemnifying the client. Flood's not going to cover. We don't have flood. Doesn't matter. The floods, regardless of flood, regardless of flood, there's still damage from the flood line up that you guys are responsible for. But the flood then line Then you start talking about the matching damage. statute. Then you start talking about the material. Then you start talking about building code. There's no way 10 grand's gonna cover this. And for you to spit in the face of the family that lives here like that is, it's ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous. Well, how, how can I cover something up here when flood is because down here? Because there's a giant hole in the roof and the window is blown well, out. Well, again, we talked about the construction, the laborers. Oh, on this yeah, house, the kid whoever. was hanging up doing pull up. You I know, don't know what Get out of here, Brad. Just, Brad, just get out of here. Get out of here. So we're out here. You don't we're, even we're, want to deal anymore. We're, we're too far just off. Just get out of here. Fine. Uh, we'll, we'll talk. He's unreasonable. Have a good day, guys. It's a circus. That did not sound good. I was so relieved that I didn't have to go through the inspection with the inspector. I caught enough of it at the end. I knew that this would be kind of an interesting um, situation, you know, filming everything that we film for the show. But I found um, it was quite helpful too because we have on film the comments by the adjuster. And I think that that's gonna work in our favor when we go to um, tell them what we really need and, and get the coverage that we need. You know, these people, when they come out, they don't have the authority to do anything. Most of the time, you know, they, they come out and they're okay, they're not great. But this guy, we have all this on camera. And whenever, whenever they catch wind of the behavior, that, that was going on here today, you know, there, there's gonna be no doubt in my mind that they're gonna wanna reach out and do the right thing and pay policy limits on this. So I, I know right now it looks like it didn't go well and, you know, we had kind of a blowout out here, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel certain once they get this footage, they're gonna do the right thing. I've got you fighting for me, right? Absolutely, absolutely, every step of the way. Yeah, he was so ridiculous that it's, it's gonna work against him. It's not like he was, if he was halfway reasonable to make it harder on us, I think the carrier is going to want to pay it. It's so atrocious, we're just going to push him out of the way. He doesn't have any authority anyway. We'll go directly to the desk uh, adjuster and explain to them why they need to pay it, explain to him what this adjuster, so-called adjuster, did, and we'll get it paid. We'll, we'll, we'll get policy limits on this claim. Like I told you before, we always win. It's just a matter of how fast we can do it, how long it's going to take. Tyler, are you going to take it up with the desk adjuster right away? Yeah, yes, sir. I'm going to get on the phone with them, let them know what we have going on. And I had a claim one time they offered $11,700. We had a video camera there. This is before we started Insurance Wars. It was the same sort of thing. Just building consultants, adjusters, engineers. They were all being completely ridiculous. And uh, when I sent it into the carrier, we settled for 600000 
So, Christy, right. I tell you, I'm sorry that that happened right Thank there at the end. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll take care of it. All right. I'll All get right. on the phone with them as soon as I get back, and we'll get this squared away, OK? All right. Be safe. Bye. So I'm Frank, you are? Paula. And I'm Angela. And we're the Wilsons. <laughs> and we're the Wilsons. <laughs> Look at I, that. I get chunks. That was cool sticking out of the ground. ground. Yeah. But as the wind picked up, and the wind came more severe, I figured we better go to the laundry room for right. the safety of the laundry room, hunker down there. And thank God we did. Me too. I'm Bo. Nice to meet you. Hi, Bo. The truss up there that's been snapped in half. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't disagree. It's, it's damaged. The insurance company, the more crooked stuff they do, the more they're digging their own grave. And so we'll lay them to sleep in it. 